He said, Pastor, all the big, big grammar you used to speak, I don't understand them. He said, you assume too much. You assume that all of us understand big words like righteousness, like sanctification. You just assume. And I was shocked. I thought I was a teacher and that I've broken it down enough. So from then on, I don't assume anymore. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right doing. Doing what is right. Tell your neighbor, doing what is right. Please say it very well. Job said in Job 29, Job 29, from verse 14, Job had this to say. He said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not I searched out and I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth always doing what is right that's righteousness so close your eyes and call upon the almighty God help me to do what is right all the time just as we have been told in the open heaven today because of the reward that's attached to doing what is right. Always doing what is right. All my life. Because it will deliver me in the day of trouble. Always doing what is right. Help me, Lord, to do what is right all the time. According to the prescription of your word. Always doing what is right. We have been shown clearly this morning the rewards of righteousness. That righteousness is not about God, it's about you. His benefits are for you, for me. Help me, Lord. To do what is right all the time. Right conduct, right doing. Help me, Lord, every single day of my life to say the right words, to think the right thoughts all the time. To do the right things. Let my actions be right. Let my responses be right. Yes, Lord. Always doing what is right. Let your Holy Spirit be my guide. To always do what is right. Yes, Lord, help me so that I can reap the rewards of righteousness, the benefits of righteousness. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are going to tell the Almighty God, let my life influence those who are in my circle of influence. That wherever I go from now on, because of my life of righteousness, let others also learn righteousness from me. Through me, talk, of, talk to the living God. Let others also learn righteousness from me. Let my life of righteousness also influence others. There are several others who are looking up to you, who are looking into your life. Your responses, your behavior, your lifestyle. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
The Bible tells us righteousness exalts a nation. One of the reasons why we are having serious issues in our country is lack of righteousness. We are going to join our hands together. We are going to call upon the living God that he will release the spirit of righteousness on Nigeria. Don't think it is too difficult for God to change Nigeria. Just go ahead and pray that prayer. Father, release the spirit of righteousness on our country. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any country. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. My Father, help us as a nation to embrace righteousness, to promote righteousness, right doing. Help us, Lord, as believers. Help us, Lord, to promote righteousness. Help us, Heavenly Father. Our righteousness has crippled our country. But there's nothing impossible for you to do. Help us, O oh Lord, to be on our feet as a country. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. By the power of your spirit, unleash the spirit of righteousness on this country. Let people begin to love doing what is right. My father, Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You are still going to pray that prayer. The problem with righteousness, or, or, or the problem with unrighteousness, is that it will give you quick reward, quick solution. But when the results begin to manifest, you will regret that you have gotten quick solution. We are going to call upon the Almighty God that that spirit that is always seeking for shortcuts, that the Almighty God will remove it from our country. We will remove it from our lifestyle. Shall we call upon the Lord? Lord, that you will help me. You will help us not to seek for shortcuts. The grace to do things right. Not looking for shortcuts. Please, Lord, release it upon us. Others may think that we are foolish, but Lord, help us to stay put on doing what is right all the time. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for the services of today, all the worship services of today, in this auditorium, in this compound, the first service there, the second service, the service in the Teens Church, the chosen generation, the service among our children, that the Holy Spirit will be present in all these services. That this day, the Lord will heal, 
the Lord will deliver through the ministry of the word, through the praise and worship, that everything we will do today will come from him. Through the Sunday school, he will minister to us. Through the giving of our offerings and tithes, he will minister to us. Every aspect of the service, we minister to our spirits. Tell the Almighty God that everyone that will come into this particular place today, as they enter this compound, they will encounter divine presence. The Lord is hearing your prayers already. And as I pray for others, God is also praying for you. Intercede on behalf of someone coming in today. My Father, everyone that comes here today, Lord, let them come directly in contact with your presence. God of heavens, God of righteousness, let lives be changed today. Let situations receive your touch today. Those who will come with body in their hearts, take away everybody. Take away everybody. Bodies are lifted at Calvary. Destroy every yoke today. My Father, that this very day will be the beginning of a new thing for every one of us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's commit to the hand of the Lord our programs that we are running up today. The prayer conference and the strategic prayer. We are going to ask the Almighty God that He will move mightily in all these programs. He will do something new for us as individuals, something new for our country. Shall we call upon the Lord? As your children are coming for these programs today, you will do something new for us, a new thing. A new thing. We do not have to know how you will do it, which direction our help will come from. All we are asking, Lord, is you will do a new thing in our lives. A new thing. For everyone that will attend today, you will do a new thing. You will do a new thing. You will touch every life. Your name and your name alone will be glorified, my Father. The strategic directional prayer that we are praying, O oh Lord, for this country, using FCT as a point of contact, let it bring in a new thing for our country. Destroy the yoke of terrorism. Permanently arise on our behalf, speak peace to our country. Let there be peace. Take away darkness, fight our battles, do a new thing for us as a country. Vain is the help of man. You are the only one we have. Help us, O oh Lord. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your name be glorified forever, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to use this opportunity to pray for all our brothers and sisters in sensitive positions in government, in the civil service, in politics, all his children who are in sensitive position, that the Almighty God will help them and will arise on their behalf. He will protect them. Shall we begin to pray? All our brothers and sisters in public sector, in private sector, That the Almighty God will watch over them. Everyone. This is not only for those of us who are in Central Parish. Everyone. All children of God. Of all denominations. Old in sensitive positions that the Lord will watch over everyone. My Father, thank you, Jesus. That the Lord will watch over their families. Jesus. My Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray for our Father and the Lord, the general pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. In the next few days, um, in a matter of one week plus, one week, one day, it will, it will turn 78. We are going to tell the Almighty God that as the living God has preserved him all these years, that his strength will not fail. That he will continue to work stronger. Amen. That he will, he will do more for this generation Amen. and for generations to come. Amen. Shall we begin to pray? Amen. That the anointing upon his life will be on the increase. Amen. Our Father, that you will watch over him. You will keep him. You will strengthen him. The anointing upon his life will be fresh every day. You have raised him up to be a blessing. He will be a blessing all the days of his life. As his years be, so shall his, his strength be. Your glory upon him will radiate the more. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We still have a whole week before we have another month. And may I tell you, as we are going to the end of this second month, there are still miracles that God has in store for you. And so I want you to pray for yourself now. What you want the Lord to do for you before this particular month is over. Just go ahead and call upon the Lord on your own behalf. You have prayed for others. It's time to pray for yourself.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. We appreciate you, Daddy. And we honor you today. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Our Father, we thank you today. We honor you that you have brought us to yet another week. Thank you, Lord, for this Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for the message that you have sent to us today. Thank you for your son that was used to speak to us. Lord, we appreciate you. I accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Blessed Father, we want to thank you, Lord, because of what we know you will do. We want to thank you ahead of time because we know that today you will bless us and you will bless us indeed. We know, Lord, today, Lord, you will, everyone that comes into these services, my Lord and my God, we pray you will touch their lives anew in the name of Jesus. You will glorify yourself. Father Almighty, every one of us who has come today, Lord, you will impart our lives. We will have our testimonies. Even before this week is over, all the miracles that you have in mind for us, all the miracles that you have destined for us for the month of February, let them locate us in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. At the end of this great day, we pray that every one of us, we shall have every cause to glorify your name. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. And everybody will say, Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with the people around you. Welcome them to the presence of the Lord. To a new day. Today we'll be glad get to drop your workers off. It's a mighty redeemer. Can we just lift up our voices to God? Come and appreciate him. Give him praise. Call him by his names. He's God of gods. He's King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship Yahweh. He's hard on I. He's hell on him. No one like you. Arugo Jogogo. Lord will worship you. We hail you, Jesus. We hail you, Jesus. You reign on I. You are not a man that you should lie. Neither a man that you should repent. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You reign on I. You reign.
loved all by yourself. You are God, oh, you are God. From beginning to from beginning to the end, there's no place. There's no
thank you oh my god oh you are god the old world may fade away but you will never fade away you are god i say the whole world may fade away but your world may fade away but you will never fade away you will never fade away you Your name, you're worthy. You are God. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. You are Hallelujah. Can we just put those hands together for the God alone? The house of wonders. Hallelujah. I want you to ask your neighbor that are you here to worship God? Are you here this morning to give him praise? Hallelujah. Why then why? 
and his mercies endure us forever. Let us begin to worship our good God, the one that can never fail, the one that is there for us, the unchangeable changer, the keeper of our souls, the almighty Father. Let us worship him this morning. Today is the day of resurrection, the day of power, the day of new beginning. And has already told us that he's going to do a new thing. I appreciate him because he's not a liar. Ah, everlasting Father, we want to thank you. We magnify thee. We exalt your name. We lift you high. You are wonderful. You are holy. You are pure. Nobody to be compared with you. Blessed be thy name, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Because of our time this morning, because I enter here late, we are going to tell the Almighty God, I have come here today to receive from you. Father, touch me. Open my eyes to the reality of your words. I don't just want to be hearing your word without the reflection of your word in my life. Father, please open my eyes. Open my heart. Let your word find place in my heart, Father. Let your word find place. I must be a model of your word. I must be a model of your word. People must see me and see your glory in my life. They must see me and know me as a child of God. By my ways of doing, by touching lives, by ministering unto lives, by being like Job says, Life make me the eye unto the blind. Father, please, please let there be a reflection of your word in my life. I don't want to be playing Christian as usual. I'm a child of God. When they see me, they must see the sign of kingship in me. Do a new thing in my life. Don't let my life be stagnant. Don't let my life be stagnant. Let people see me and see your glory. Make me an instrument unto honor. Let people be able to vouch for me. Indeed, this is a child of God. And how can they see that? By seeing the reflection of the word of God in our lives. By carrying a new beginning in, our, in, in, in all our places of work. And wherever they find us, Father, help me. Help me. Don't let it be game as usual. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Well, the Father, we want to thank you this morning. Because you are the one that put out the invitation unto us. And we had collected it from you. It is by our volition that we have come this morning. Nobody harass us to come. Nobody force us to come. That is why we must surrender ourselves unto your word. And your word must have impact in our lives. My Father and my Lord, as we have come this morning, let there be reflection of your words in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, do a new thing in our lives. You said, behold, I will do a new thing. Father, do a new thing in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we are committing all the services of today into their hands. This first service, the second, the things, and even the children's on this, this children's school. Father, we pray that you will do a new thing in the life of everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Righteousness exalted a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people, any nation. Every atom of sin, let it disappear from our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your son that you are going to use, Lord my Father, please release your anointing upon him. Let him speak as your mouth peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. At the end of the service this morning, let our mind be lighted. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to your name, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Good morning, everybody. You are welcome. Turn to your neighbor and say, You are beautiful. I could see the glory of God in you. God bless you.
morning, brethren. Welcome to today's service. There's a live broadcast of the Central Parish Broadcasting Network, CPBN. Highlights of today's broadcast. RCCG 50 Days Fast, Pilgrim Rate with Daddy Jill, School of Disciples Registration, Abuja Prayer Conference, other announcements. Today is day 44 and the last week of our 50 days fast. Hallelujah! Prayers will hold from Monday to Thursday in this auditorium at 5 p.m. However, to round off the fast, a 24 hours praise and prayer themed showers of blessing will hold here from Friday the 28th to Saturday the 29th of February 2020. Time is from 6 p.m. this Friday. If you would like to take part in this Israel 2020 pilgrimage with our Father in the Lord, kindly register online by logging on to www.rccg.org and click on the Israel 2020 page. Forms are also available in the church office. The School of Disciples registration is ongoing. To sign up, please see the church administration. A refresher course is also available for School of Disciples graduates, that is, the class of 1995 to 2015. It will run this week from the 27th to 29th of February 2020, right here in Central Parish. Please note that it's compulsory to register. To register, you need to log on to www.rccg slash crmsod.org or you can call 0803-290-9433. Deadline for registration is tomorrow, Monday, 24th February. The Abuja Prayer Conference holds this afternoon at 1 p.m. right here in this auditorium. The theme is a new thing. As you take part in this conference, it's our earnest prayer that God will do a new thing in your life in Jesus' name. Our Thanksgiving service for the month of March will hold next Sunday, the 1st of March. Please note that the service will start at 8 a.m. and it will be a combined service. Are you a football fan or an avid footballer? The Region 10 football competition will kick up soon. Interested persons should kindly wait at the gallery behind the minister's seating area after the service to see the church football administration. Registration for Workers in Training session. A new session of our Workers in Training is on. For registration and inquiries, please call Pastor Taiwo Ajani on 0809-210-2200. We're encouraged to listen to the Hour of Revelation with Pastor Deemi and other programs like the Open Heavens and the Prayers for the Fasting by logging on to Central Parish Radio on www.centralparishradio.org or you can download the Central Parish Radio app via Google Play Store. Remember, a reminder, to register for free cataract treatment, please see the head of the welfare department, Nikin Femi Rotimi. Primus International Super Speciality Hospital is hosting a free health consultation at their premises at Karu, Abuja. Date is 24th February to 7th March. The free consultancy covers all specialties and requires a registration charge of 1,000 Naira with discount on other services. For further inquiries, you could please call 0812-777-7752. The Chosen Generation Sanctuary, that's the Teens Church, is offering free jam tutorials and it's currently going on. It runs from February 8th to March 7th, 2020. Time is 4 p.m. on Fridays and 9 a.m. on Saturdays. Venue is Central Parish. To register, you can also call 0706-333-1227. All brethren born in the month of March are requested to wait at the choir sitting area after the service for a meeting about the administration next Sunday. Once again, we're so excited to welcome all our first timers. Please note our weekly services. Every first Sunday of the month is our combined Thanksgiving service. It starts at 8 a.m. 
Other Sundays, we have two services. The first service holds at 7.45 a.m. And the youth and young adult service starts at 9.30 a.m. Every weekday for the period of the fast, we meet here from 5 to 6 p.m. On Wednesdays, we hold a prophetic lunch hour fellowship. It starts at 11.45, and it's called the Breakthrough Hour. The last Wednesday of every month is our anointing service during the Breakthrough Hour. And so this Wednesday, the 26th February, will be an anointing service. The Hebrew Women Fellowship meets with the wife of the AGO at 10 a.m. Every morning, prayers hold in this auditorium from 6 to 7 a.m. Midday prayers hold in church every weekday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. House fellowship holds on Sunday evenings at various house fellowship centers. For more information about the church, our programs and activities, you can follow us on our social media platforms using the handle RCCG Central Parish or you can visit our website www.rccgcentralparish.org. Our food for thought is a scripture taken from Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. End quote. The question is, are you following Jesus? Do have a blessed week. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are glad to be in God's presence, shout a better hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are excited that you are alive to witness the last Sunday of the month of February, jump up on your feet and shout the loudest hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. One more time, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me shake your neighbor to your right and to your left and say, neighbor, to be alive is not automatic. It takes the grace and the mercy of God. The same grace and mercy will keep you. Even till the end of the year. If you believe it, shout a big amen. amen. And shout a confirming hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. Let's please have a seat. If today is your very first time of worshiping in this assembly, we would like to recognize you and give you a special welcome. So can you please wave your hands wherever you are seated? Pick your bags, pick your Bibles. The church will want to give you a special welcome. Church, let's celebrate them. Yes, if you are there, please you come are forward. You are welcome to the Redeem family. You are welcome to the Redeem family. There is joy in heaven for you. You have come to Do we have anybody from this side? The Lord Jesus will smile on you today. My sister, you are very special. You see that you are the only one heaven recognized this morning. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will visit you. Whatever issues in your heart that you have brought to this house today, God will attend to them in Jesus' name. This is the redeemed Christian church. Oh, another brother is coming. Let's celebrate him. Please, if you are still seated there and you are supposed to be out, it will be good you come so that the church can pray for you. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God Central Parish, the regional headquarters of Region 10. On behalf of our father and mother and the Lord, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. E. D. A. Odeyemi, we say you are welcome to church and God bless you in Jesus' name. Church, please can we stretch forth our hands and just say some blessings upon them. Let's speak good things into their lives that as they have come, they will not go the same way they have come. God will visit them, meet them at the point of their needs. Let's pray that the word of God that will come will transform them. God will establish their feet in his kingdom. 
in the precious name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. All our times of services have been said at the broadcast. You are always welcome in Jesus' name. Please, after the service, you wait for a brief reception. But in the meantime, just have your seats right there in the front. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know you want to give God your best this morning, let me see you wave your hands up to heaven. Now, like you mean it, if you know you want to give God your best, I mean your absolutely best this morning, wave your two hands up. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
blessed Savior. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. Everything I have, I give to you, Lord. I surrender all. If you are clapping for Jesus, do it well. All to Jesus. All to Him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all to be my blessed Savior. I surrender. Let's bow before Him and sing that song again. I surrender. I surrender. I just want you to turn that particular chorus to a prayer for yourself. I surrender all to you, everything about my life, about my future. I surrender all to you. Turn it to prayer. The one who knows everything about you, he knows your beginning, your ending. He knows all things concerning you. I surrender all to you. I surrender all to you, Lord. Lord, I surrender to you. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Blessed Father, we appreciate you this morning. We give you glory and honor that you have brought us to yet another Sunday. A day of worship. A day of praises. A day of being in your presence. Accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our country, Nigeria. We thank you because in spite of all that the adversary is doing, you are having your way. Accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our past. We thank you for our present. We thank you for our future. We thank you most especially that we are already going towards the end of the second month of the year. Accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. We know without any doubt that having brought us to this particular Sunday of the year, this last Sunday of this particular month, we know we will see the end of the year gloriously in the name of Jesus. 
Blessed Father, even as we go into your word, bless us in your word again. Minister to every heart. Glorify your name. All the programs we have today, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray your presence will be very present in the name of Jesus. You will preside yourself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody will say, Please shake hands with your neighbor and welcome them. Tell them, I have seen the glory of God in your life. You will not lose the glory. It will be on the increase. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I'd like you to also help me tell your neighbor, don't ever come late to church. Because God is waiting for you. Please help me tell them, help me tell them so that they can hear you well. Hallelujah. Today is a very busy day for me as an individual and um, for us as a church. Because today we, have, um, we are running up the prayer conference. And I will want you to be part of this prayer conference. The prayer conference of this month is very important. It says a new thing. God is going to do a new thing in your life. Amen. We started on Friday. We are running up today. We are also running up the strategic prayer that God had us to pray. He has us to pray a strategic directional prayer on FCT um, to represent Nigeria. You see, God is a God of strategy. And the Bible is a book of strategy. Hallelujah. Um, and he said, this prayer that he asked us to pray is different from other prayers that we have ever prayed. This time around, he said we should specifically locate the four directions, the four cardinal points of FCT and locate six churches in the four cardinal points of FCT representing six geopolitical regions of Nigeria. And he said we should hold a prayer meeting comprising of praise and worship, mostly praise and worship and prayer, in each of those locations. And we have done that from Monday all the way to yesterday. So we have completed the six days yesterday. And God said, on the last day, just like the children of Israel, moved around the wall of Jericho seven times on the seventh day. Today, we are going to have that same prayer, that same pattern in all the six locations and at the center of FCT. The center of FCT happened to fall in Kujé. We have to locate all this by map. So we are having that... Um, those um, seven points today, between five and eight. I know some of you, you may be living far, but if you find out from the people in the media, they might be able to tell you which one is nearest to your own house. I will advise that you are part of that five to eight prayer. In addition to whatever we are going to do here, it is very important. This is not like any other day. This day is different because... These prayers we are having this week is a prayer cover. Prayer cover for the year. I have not made too much noise about it, but there is something strategic about the prayers of today. So I want to be part of it, and the Lord will bless you. So here we are meeting between 1 and 4, as usual, and immediately we finish here by 4, I will be moving to the center, that is the seventh point. While the others, we have all our pastors already located in all the six other points with all their provinces that fall within that, within that, um, um, uh, that enclave. And between 7.30 and 8, God has led me to pray a specific prayer for Nigeria. We are going to broadcast it on our radio, Central Parish Radio. That prayer is a prayer of handing over Nigeria back to God. Yeah. We will say that prayer between 7.30 and 8. 
So if you cannot get to, the, to any of the points, you can also tune in, and then you will be able to partake of it. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. This particular passage of the Bible is a very powerful one. Powerful one in the sense that I believe it's talking to me as a person and it's also talking to you. Jesus began here to tell the disciples by saying, your heart must not be troubled. I know you have situations all around you that may make you afraid. But he said, don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. All you need to do, let your belief in God be strong and believe also in me. If you do that, I will take care of the situation. And I can assure you, it doesn't matter what the situation around you is, it will take care of it. So I, I want you to help me tell your neighbor, don't let your heart be troubled. Please say it very well. If there is any time anybody in Nigeria should be afraid, I think it's now. But there are some of us, we are so confident. We are confident because we know that um, our tomorrow will be all right. I, let me, maybe I should personalize that. My tomorrow will be... Hallelujah. So we want to continue in our series on following Jesus. Jesus Christ in verse 3, the last part of verse 3 says, Where I am, that ye may be there also. Where I am, that ye may be there also. Now, the, the subject of this particular passage that we have read is all about heaven. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He was, he was preparing their mind for heaven. Heaven is a subject that every believer must think about every day. Thinking about heaven does not mean that you are going to die tomorrow. But it prepares you for any time death comes. Thinking about heaven helps you to put your life right on a daily basis. Because when you know about heaven, especially the more you know about heaven, the more you aspire to be there. The more you want to ensure that you will not miss heaven. So I want you to tell your neighbor, may you not miss heaven. Please say it very well. Our Father the Lord told us several years ago, while he was preaching on the subject of heaven, he said, one day in heaven, you will forget everything you have ever suffered on earth. He said, you will not even remember that you suffered on earth. One day, because of the splendor, the glory of that environment. On the other hand, it reminded us, one day in hell, you will not remember that you ever enjoyed. So, so the, the choice is, is a very, is a clear one. Anyone who is a believer can't afford not to think about this choice every day. So when Jesus was about to leave, he began to prepare the disciples for um, his departure. And the issue of heaven was not left in limbo, as it were. He made it clear. He showed them clearly. In my father's house, I made him anxious. Don't be worried about what is going on here. That's what he was saying. Don't let your heart be troubled. Several things are going to happen in the next few days because he knew he was going to the cross. But he said, what is important is this. In my father's house 
and many mansions. said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare that particular place for you. And I am trusting God. Everyone who is listening to me today, you will not miss that place. Yeah. There are several things the Lord laid upon my heart that we should say within this uh, short period. If I'm not able to finish, we pick it up later because of several things that we have to do today. But let me just see how far we can go. Number one, heaven is God's house. Heaven is God's house. But it is big enough to accommodate mansions. I want you to take note of that. In my father's house are many mansions. In the world here, when a house is very, very big, what do you call it? A mansion. <laughs> That's what we call a, a, a house that is really big. Palatia. So, wow, this is a mansion. But Jesus Christ, in describing his father's house, he said, my father's, in my father's house, he said, heaven is a house. But inside this house, there are mansions. There are mansions. So, what a beautiful place it will be. Where God lives is made up of several mansions. And, those, and one of those mansions is being built for me. It's been prepared for me. For me. For me. I'm talking about me. I am really, really concerned about my getting. I, I must not miss ever. That's the reason why every one of us is important for us to always bear this in mind. God is saying here, I have a plan concerning your life. And that plan is beyond the earth, air. Every believer must always focus his attention on that mansion. In fact, it should be your prayer. Lord, I want to see my mansion before I die. That should be your prayer. It should be your focus. It's unfortunate that in the world today, in several churches, you will not see people preaching about heaven. We are so much concerned about the here and now. But it doesn't matter how long we live here and now. <laughs> the most important place in our life is where we are going to, to live here after. That's the most important thing. It doesn't matter how many years anyone lives here. The eternity is more important. And heaven is talking about eternity. Oh, Lord, don't let me die. We will ask you a question. Where is your grandfather? They've gone. If my grandfather died and my father died, why should I pray that I shouldn't die? In fact, one of the things I like about my grandfather and my father was that he talks about death. Every day, you would, you would say that he was going to die tomorrow. In fact, the subject of death didn't bother him at all. So that's why any time he has bought a new dress today, he will wear it the next day. He will tell you, he said, I don't want another person to wear it before I wear it. <laughs> he was always thinking about death. And you will think that he will die quickly. No, 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 no. He died at the age of 85. He still lived old. So people are so morbid about death. They are so afraid to talk of death. You shouldn't be afraid of death. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid of death. Please say it very well. Say it very well. Heaven is God's house. But inside the house, he has a mansion for me. And he has a mansion for you. So my friend, whatever you are going through doesn't matter now. Always be conscious of the fact that a mansion is being prepared for you. Many of us will die as landlord here on earth. But when you are dying, it doesn't matter how palatial your house may be. Your coffin will not take more than your body. It will not take your house. It will not take your car. Your car will become another person's car. 
your house will become another person's house. One of my friends, very funny person, said his auntie had a big house. And then one day, he went on a visit and met the auntie in the room. One, one room. She sat down there. She couldn't even leave the room. That's where they take care of her from morning to night. She was the owner of the whole house. But age and sickness has confined her to one room. You must always think of your hand. You must know the house you are stealing money to build today. One day, you'll be confined to only one bed. You know, some of us, we don't think about all those kind of things. We just want to grab and grab and grab and grab. After all your grabbing, you will discover that you have been a fool. So tell your neighbor, don't be a fool. Please say it very well. Number two. Matthew nineteen twenty-eight. Matthew nineteen twenty-eight, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. There are thrones in heaven. That's number two. Because heaven is a place of reward. It's a place of exaltation. It's a place where God will exalt you. Where God will reward all your labor of love. Everything you have done here on earth, everything you have done for God, everything you have done for humanity, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, if you live the life that takes you to heaven, you live a life of holiness, because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. When you get there, you will be rewarded. All that you have done will be rewarded. I have told you the story of a woman who died. And this story was told to me by the son-in-law. Not by somebody far away from her. The doctor came around to check so that he can write uh, the death certificates. So they want to certify her death. And the woman just woke up. And the woman asked the doctor, Doctor, have you paid your tithes? And the woman, and the doctor, <laughs> the doctor was, what's wrong? My man, this is, uh, this is our street, this is our church. And the old woman said, when I got there, they showed me my tithe card. Everything you have done here on earth, that's where you are going to have the reward. Everything. And everything you didn't do, you are also going to have the reward there. There are thrones in heaven. Jesus was studying the disciples. He said, if you make it to the other side, twelve thrones are waiting for you. One for each of you. Because you are the ones who will judge, who will judge Israel. Heaven is a place we are common people we reign as kings. Common people. <laughs> These were fishermen, commoners, tax collector. And Jesus said, they have prepared 12 thrones for you already in heaven. Each of you, you will have a throne, judging the tribe of Israel. But don't forget, there were 12 thrones. But only 11 of them made it to the end. So what happened to the 12th throne? It was given to somebody else. So it is possible that they, they have provided a mansion for you in heaven. And you didn't make it at last. So what will happen? And that person will take it. So that's why you must pray for yourself every time. My mansion. My throne. Don't let another one take it. Because there will not be vacuum there. There won't be vacancy over there. Over there, the moment anybody has missed his own mansion, they put another name there. 